My name is Martin Damon, and today I'll show you how to use our new Truck Science app for trailer combinations. In our previous webinar, we covered the basics of using the app and how to configure a rigid vehicle. In this session, we'll work through some of the more advanced features, such as building trailers and doing total cost of ownership calculations. For those of you who are still using Transolve, please remember to to make the switch to the new version. Uh, for dealers, you will migrate to the Truck Science Sales tool. And for bodybuilders, you will change to the axle weight calculator. My co presenter for today is Olaf Tilner, our data and training manager. Olaf will monitor the chats and help with answering your questions as we go through the session. I'll ask Olaf at this point to introduce himself and to explain some of the other training options that we offer. Olaf. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you all uh, logging in. Um, with, uh, with that, what Martin mentioned with the training options that we're doing in the past, you might be aware that usually we do classroom style training, which is either on site uh, or otherwise it would have been um, at our offices uh, in Kloof in Durban. Uh, but now, obviously, with the times, we've moved a lot uh, of these op options online as well, uh, just so that we can continue and offer some video um, sessions as well. Uh, so going forward, our plan is to do similar sessions like today, uh, where we focus on specific functions or tasks or applications. Uh, and with that, we're going to build up a bit of a video library, which will, will enable you to go back and, uh, you know, really look at those videos um, if you ever need to. Uh, we have already done some intro sessions. Some of you may have attended some of those already. Uh, we do also offer specific OEM training. Uh, so if you have a, a, or a dealership or even an OEM as such that needs training for all your, all your dealers and staff, uh, we can arrange that. I think at those times, we either need to deal uh, with your academy if that, that applies, or otherwise uh, chat to us directly and we can work out a specific training plan uh, with you on Truck Science software. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Olaf. Yeah. All right. Before we go any further, I'll just give you those tips again on how to get the most out of this webinar portal. So you can start off by docking that camera window. You'll find that dock icon at the bottom right of that uh, AV pod. And that will move the camera window to the right panel of the screen so that it doesn't obscure any section of the presentation area. Uh, we also recommend that you select the full screen option. You'll find that at the top right of your screen. And uh, by the, all microphones are muted by default. However, we will welcome your participation. So if you'd like to ask a question at any point, please raise your hand or type your question into the chat you'll find these features at the bottom right of your screen. Olaf will look out for any chats coming through there. All right, so here's an overview of what we'll cover. Um, I'll show you how to configure your truck tractor with a trailer and payload. Then we'll run some simulations to predict fuel consumption and trip time. And finally, we'll do a total cost of ownership calculation to work out the total cost per kilometer. To show you these features, I'll take you through a live demo now. Uh, so for our first scenario, we'll pick a low bed trailer and add a 28 ton excavator. Then we'll build our own semi trailer, just a flat deck trailer and loaded with 14 pallets of cement. And for our third scenario, we'll put together a curtain side interlink combination to carry about 36 tons of payload. We will also use the, the interlink combination to run the simulations and to do the total cost per kilometer calculations. Okay, let's get started. I will share my screen with you now and log into, log into our Google, our recommended Google Chrome browser. And we'll start off at our homepage, trucksigns.com. You'll find the login button near the top right. And once, once we've logged in, the app will open to the vehicle selection screen. Okay, so for our first scenario with, with a low bit, we'll scroll down and we'll work with the UD Questa. I just want to explain the different uh, brands of vehicles here. 
in the past, for especially for dealers, we've, uh, you've only been able to do calculations on your own vehicles. With the new version, we are allowing you to do low distribution calculations on your competitors as well. However, you will not be able to run simulations and do costumes on your competitors, but you can do load distribution. That's why you'll find that all the brands are now shown in your library when you log into the app. Right, we'll start off with the UD and we'll set Questa. We'll choose a six by four. We'll narrow down this list a bit further by applying another filter, which is quite handy. I'll choose uh, the truck tractors only. Then I'll narrow it down to these three. And we'll just choose the 390 horsepower option. All right, the truck tractor will open with all the specs uh, from the manufacturer. And you'll see in this case, there's already a fifth wheel fitted as standard. Then something to point out again, that's very important on truck tractors is the chassis mass. So in this case, you'll see the chassis mass is just over eight tons, which is obviously very light for a six by four truck tractor but it excludes fuel and driver. Fuel and crew under extras. So the total uh, unladen for the truck tractor with a full tank of fuel or two, or two tanks of fuel and the driver just under nine tons. You can see the details of the fuel uh, from the vehicle menu at the top. And you can look at factory fitted fuel tanks. Fuel tank one, you see is 405 liters. Volume included in chassis mass is zero. So it's not included in the spec sheet mass. Therefore, we add it under extras. And the same applies to the second fuel tank. I'll close that menu option again. And I'll show you another example later on when we do the interlink on a truck tractor where the fuel is already included in the chassis mass. We can now continue by adding the trailer. To do that, I'll go to the menu on the left, click on trailer one, We'll do a semi-trailer. Now we have some options. We can either choose a template. So we've, by default, we show you all the trailers. These are the template trailers, so you can build your own, which we'll get to. Uh, your personal library and the team library will save some items as well. And then the public library. The public library consists of all the trailers we've captured over the years. You'll see here there's a whole lot of efforts and a few other uh, trailers manufacturers in our database. So we could uh, search, for example, let's search on low bed. So if you type in low bed, it'll return all the trailers that have low bed in the description. And I'll scroll down and pick this sample 35 ton, three axle low bed. Right, the trailer will be added at our default fifth wheel offset, which is 510 millimeters forward of the center of the rear bogey. First thing we will notice here is there is an overload. So immediately on the dashboard here, there's a, there's a cross, a red cross indicating that this vehicle is not fully compliant with the regulations. So we'll have a look at that dimensions. If you're not sure, if you can't spot the obvious dimension that's causing that, uh, we can go to notes and warnings on the right. Let's click on warnings and it will tell us the overall length exceeds the limit of 18 and a half meters. So we'll see it there highlighted in red. So it's over by 55 because the limit is 18 and a half. So what we can do is we can move the fifth wheel forward slightly um, just to bring that into 18 and a half. Before we do that, I just want to point out that this rig is currently limited by the bridge formula and moving the fifth wheel will affect the permissible total, which is now 49 and a half tons. The, the sum of axles, if you had to add these up, would actually be 49,700. All right, so something uh, to look out for now is just to make sure that the, the manufacturer has provided enough, maybe pre-drilled holes there, to move the fifth wheel slightly further forward. Everything is within legal again, and the scorecard shows ticks everywhere, so we're fully compliant. Our payload by default is calculated as a point load, in this case, just under 25 tons. We want to put on an excavator, so let's add our piece of machinery. So to do that, we go to the payload option on the menu. 
we'll toggle it from a simple payload, which is giving us just that point load. We'll change that to detailed payload. Again, we've got template items, your own personal saved items and items from the public library. In this case, I will start off by just putting on a very big digger here. So just to show you, I've got this Komatsu digger. This unit is extremely big and I'm um, doing it deliberately to show the overload. It weighs just over 43 tons. So the dashboard highlights quite a lot of items that uh, on compliance, so it's way over on manufacturer and permissible limits. It also exceeds the overall maximum height of 4.3 meters. So this uh, trailer is not suitable for this digger. So we'll remove that and change it for a, a slightly smaller one. So I'll click on it in the graphic. That in itself will open the menu and I can click on the scissors here just to remove that digger. Now, what I'll do now, instead of choosing another um, excavator or digger from our public library, I'll use the import a DXF file feature at the bottom. So you'll notice when we've added an option here, can't find what you need, import a DXF file, use a template, the template you can specify your own dimensions, or you can ask us to add it. So those are the options if you get stuck with uh, finding something that you need for your calculation. So we'll import a DXF file, click on choose a file. So I'm just going to my desktop here and I'm picking this CAT310 excavator DXF. I'll open that. So it's a simple DXF, a two dimensional drawing, uh, less than one megabyte in size. And we will import that and allow you to run through a very simple wizard just to customize uh, your dimensions and weights. So you can move this item to the zero, zero on the X and Y axis. Click on next. We can scale it to larger dimensions. So the default here will override that and make it 7.7 .7 meters. You'll see the dimensions changing and the height being recalculated. For the width, we'll just make it 2.4 meters. Next. Unit of measure is kilograms. We want to specify the weight in kilograms and we said we'll make that about 28,000 kilograms. That's a massive 28,000. And then we need to still specify the center of gravity. This can be somewhat tricky if, and you need to talk to the manufacturer of the equipment if you're not sure. So by default, we put the center of gravity in the middle of, of the item. But because the engine is uh, slightly further to the left, we'll change the horizontal center of gravity to say 30%. So that's our heavy part of the unit. And we'll drop the vertical center of gravity to say 40% of the height. So the center of gravity will be around about here for this unit. And we'll go next. All that's left to do is to give it a, a description. So we'll call this a CAT 310 uh, for this demo and save and add it. That'll then pop it onto our trailer. At the front of the trailer, we can just click and drag it and move it further rear. So if we move it too far rear, you'll notice that we're overloading the rear axle here, which is limited to 24 tons on the trident. Move it too far forward, we'll overload the tandem axle on the truck tractor, which is limited to 18 tons. So we show you the overload in kilograms and in percent. Remember, with the South African regulations, there's a tolerance on axles of 5% and 2% on overall. However, I would not recommend that you do a calculation using those tolerances. You'll see if I move it slightly back, we're within the 5% on the axles, so the warning is orange. But we are still overloaded, hence we have still marked it as a cross on the scorecard and we're still showing it under warnings as one or more axles being overloaded. So we need to get it fully legal. We'll move it slightly further back and that will do the trick. If we had to load this on a normal flat deck, which would be slightly higher up, we would probably overload on a, be over the, the height limit. So you can see again the importance of having low bed trailers for 
this type of machinery. We'll drop that back to the deck. All right. Everything looks good with our calculation. The 28 tons of payload, which is also shown in the graphic. On our scorecard, everything is ticked, so everything is legal. And we can now do a printout and present it to the customer. I want to show you one or two more options here on the right, the different views. We can toggle this to the top view, for example. We can still move the excavator laterally across the deck so that it's evenly distributed laterally. And go back to the side view. We can also look at the turning circle view. Click on that. Let's see our, what our regulation turning circle looks like. So this vehicle needs to go onto a construction site with limited turning ability. We can see right well that 13.1 meter outer radius, which is the regulation limit. There's our inner radius. So we need quite a wide pathway for this vehicle to turn. Let's toggle that back to the side view. All right, we'll move on now by changing the truck tractor to another uh, manufacturer. So let's say this trailer is uh, being towed by different uh, truck tractors at different times because it's a fairly low, low, low utilized uh, trailer. So to swap the truck tractor, we can leave the trailer with the excavator in place, go to vehicle, and click on that swap vehicle icon at the top right. We're going to swap this to a Hino 2841, and we'll choose, we know the code is EC7, so that's the single cab truck tractor. We'll swap it out. Just takes a few seconds to collect the data from the server. And yes, we want to change the description, so we'll go ahead with that. And you'll see it swaps it from the Questa to the Hino with the default fifth wheel offset of the Hino truck, which is now only 240. Notice how the driven axle on the truck tractor is now overloaded by quite a bit, one and a half tons, mainly because of the fifth wheel offset. So we'll start off by moving that forward again. And again, that will affect our bridge limit. But we'll move that forward. We'll, we can use the tickers. Let's move it 100, 200, 300 millimeters forward to about 540 millimeters. I'll close that. That will bring us almost within legal on the truck tractor because we've now transferred more weight on the front axle. We're still within the seven and a half ton legal here. So we can move our excavator back slightly so that neither the driven axle or the trailer axle are overloaded. Everything is ticked again, and we're perfectly within legal limits. All right, I might just pause at this point, to check with Olaf if there are any questions that I need to address. Olaf, let's just have a look if there is anything we need to, to answer. So if you have a question, please feel free to type it in or raise your hand so that we can activate your mic and you can even ask the question. Uh, Martin, no actual questions just yet. Uh, the biggest issue is uh, there were a few users that were not getting sound and some without picture. Uh, but just to reiterate to everyone, uh, it's recommended that you use one of the latest browsers, um, either Chrome from Google, um, Edge, or maybe even Firefox. Uh, Internet Explorer is no longer supported even by Microsoft. Uh, so it is. if you are using Internet Explorer, uh, I would recommend that you potentially use one of the other browsers available. Um, as I've noted that if someone has swapped across, the sound uh, did start working on their side. Okay. Right. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Olaf. Okay. What we'll do is we'll move on to our next scenario now. So that will be the curtain side interlink. So what we'll do is to change our vehicle and our whole reconfiguration, we can go back to home. You'll be prompted whether you want to save this calculation. Let's say, yes, we do want to save it. We forgot to save it, so we'll say yes. And we'll just put in here, uh, add to the description. We'll call this uh, demo. And I'll save that in case we need to reopen it again and make changes. That'll take us back to the vehicle selection screen. And uh, to 
uh, to choose an, a different uh, vehicle, we might want to reset our filter options. So there's an, an option here, click on reset. That'll take us back to all the makes of vehicles. And we will select an MAN TGS and we'll do a slightly different search for this model. We'll use the search by keyword option. Let's say we know the model name, 26480, 26.480. That'll narrow down to those models. So that is an, another quick and easy way to find the vehicle that you're looking for. If you know the model, especially the uh, code of the vehicle, you can uh, just type it in there. So we'll open the sufficient line with the direct drive top here. Again, our truck tractor opens with the dimensions and masses as per the spec from the manufacturer. In this case, now we'll see that the fuel and driver have already been included in the chassis mass. So the chassis, chassis mass in this case, just under 9.4 tons, and we do not add any more fuel and crew because all the fuel and crew is already included in the chassis mass. You can see that from the vehicle menu. We'll go to factory for the fuel tanks, and we'll see here the capacity of the tank one is 580 liters, volume included in chassis mass, so 580 liters of fuel has already been included in the chassis mass. So there's no point to uh, add it on again. And the same applies to the second tank. All right, so we have an accurate uh, chassis mass for the truck tractor. We also have a fifth wheel on there. And we will now start off by adding our interlink trailer. So we'll go to trailer one. We'll pick the interlink. Okay, we can uh, either build our own or we can go to the public library. And because we've already built our own semi-trailer for the interlink, it'll be much easier to pick one from the public library um, that has already been added. In this case, we'll choose, let's say we search from effort, we add curtain side to the, to the search. It'll give us all the curtain side trailer options. You can have a look at the codes. If there's a specific trailer model that you want, you should find it here. Uh, in this case, we'll work with this one that has aluminum rims. So if you don't find the trailer that, you, that you're looking for, please uh, request for us to add it for you. At this point, you can't import trailers. You can, however, um, import bodies, uh, payload items like the excavator, and also equipment. But the actual full trailer, such as this one, we you can't import it yet from a DXF file. Okay. Just want to give you an example of uh, something else that, that we do a lot in terms of the data management. So we add a lot of uh, the, these trailers and equipment and bodies. For example, if you went to body under crane, uh, sorry, under equipment and crane, and we search for a hiver, recently added all the hiver models. So there's a long list of, of their cranes in the database. The same applies to uh, fridge units. We try and maintain an up-to-date database of, of those and also tail lifts that are commonly used. So we really encourage you, if you're a bodybuilder or an equipment supplier, to upload your products and to make them available to the greater truck science community, which could be your customers so that you make it easier for, especially the truck dealers, to be able to pick your items and show them to your, effectively your customers. All right, so that's the first trailer. Let's add the second trailer. We'll choose a semi-trailer. We'll also search from effort curtain side. Choose the one with the aluminum rims. And there's our complete interlink rig. So you can also build it up from a template trailer if you wanted, each trailer. Uh, you would even most probably need to uh, reference an actual drawing from a trailer manufacturer so that you get the right dimensions for front overhang wheelbase and also for the, for the, for the weights. All right, what we'll do now 
is we'll notice that the overall length is over the 22 meters. So we will reduce, we will try and move the fifth wheel forward far enough to bring that into the 22 meters. And again, you'll see that the dimension on, on bridge shows that we are not complying. Now, this is quite a common occurrence amongst interlink combinations is that they are over 22 meters. When we've done track tests in the past with uh, Focus Magazine, we have measured the rigs and most of them have been one or 200 millimeters over the 22 meter limit. Um, there is no tolerance on overall length. So we are assuming that the traffic officers are not accurately applying that, that limit. To get this rig into 22 meters, we will need to move the fifth wheel further forward. So I'll click on that fifth wheel offset. The menu will pop out, we'll just move that to the side. So we need to move it forward by 218 millimeters. So we'll make that 618. Let's tab on the keyboard, we'll affect the change, move the fifth wheel forward and bring our vehicle combination into 22 meters. That uh, fifth wheel offset of 618 may not be the most suitable for this truck tractor because it does transfer quite a, a bit of the weight to the front axle. You'll notice that we're getting quite close to the limit here, 7.4 tons out of 7.7, .7, whilst the driven axle is now considerably underutilized, by, in fact, by over three tons. So there is a, a compromise to moving the fifth wheel uh, quite far forward. Um, also, it would it can affect the swing clearance between the corner of the trailer and the back of the cab. Just to show you that, I'll go to our turning circle option, and I'll just select the regulation turning circle. You'll see we've drawn in these arcs here to show the the swing clearance. There between the two trailers, there's a bit of swing clearance there in the worst case scenario, and the same between the front trailer and the back of the truck tractor. There is a bit of clearance. And we do also show that clearance when it becomes critical. And we indicate that under notes and warnings. So if I click on notes and warnings, we showed here cab swing clearance is 232 millimeters. The recommended minimum cab swing clearance is 300. Okay, so we just put a 300 uh, recommended limit in there. Um, then between trailer one and trailer two, it is 222. So because we know that Afrid would have done their calculations, 222 is sufficient. So 232 between the truck tractor and the trailer should also be okay. But this is a good one to check with the trailer manufacturer and the truck manufacturer, just to make sure that there's nothing at the back of the cab that could be interfering with, with the swing of that trailer. We'll go back to the side view. Because you, you might have something at the back of the truck tractor sticking out that could interfere with the corner of the trailer. So that might require a little bit of extra investigation. Right, we've got our rig into 22 meters and our payload is maximized at 36 and a bit tons. So almost 37 tons and our limit for this rig is the 56 ton uh, maximum permissible combination mass. Even though the sum of axles would be somewhat more than that, the 56 tons is the limit. Hence our axles are fairly underutilized and it is very easy to load an interlink combination without overloading any of the axle groups because there's just so much spare carrying capacity in the axles. I want to show you a nice example of one of the regulations relating to the overall length, which is if we add a bull bar. So we'll go to vehicle equipment, select bull bar, and we'll just add a small sample bull bar. By default, the bull bar is just attached to the front of the cab, and you'll see it actually protrudes beyond the front by 400 millimeters. 
Now, any bulbar that protrudes by more than 300 millimeters will be included in the overall length. So in this case, the overall length is now illegal again at 22.4 meters. To make sure that we're within the 300 millimeters, we move that uh, bulbar slightly closer. So it only protrudes by about 200 millimeters. And because it's now protruding by less than 300, it is completely excluded from the overall length. So even though it's protruding by the 200, that 200 does not get added to the overall length. So just keep that in mind for bull bars. If they're mounted correctly, they will not be included in the overall length. I think we're happy with our calculation so far. Everything is legal. We can now move on to the other modules, which is the performance, costing, specific and specification modules. But before I do that, I will swap the truck tractor again. Because we've got uh, our, our customers from different uh, dealerships and make brands of vehicles in the session, we will just use a generic truck tractor for the simulation and the costing. Olaf, are there any other questions that, that I need to address? Um, yes, uh, three questions came through. Uh, I'll start with the first one that came through uh, from Yapi. He said, if you build a trailer from scratch, uh, is it not better to rather move the kingpin offset uh, and use a standard fifth wheel position from the OEM? Yes. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Yapi. When we will, after this exercise, we'll go back and uh, build our own semi-trailer. Semi and I'll show you the front overhang, and um, and we'll go back to the default uh, fifth wheel offset. That it is, yeah, the default offset from the manufacturer is probably set for a specific reason. So we'll have another look at that. Anything else, Mark? Um, yes, uh, two questions from Livingston came through. Uh, the first one is, can you allow OEMs and other equipment suppliers to manage the content on the Truck Science app? For instance, upload your information directly into the app. And I think you, you already touched on that a little bit, but perhaps uh, you can maybe just uh, add a little bit more clarity to the upload feature, the DXF feature. Is that, is that now for vehicles specifically? Um, it, he didn't. He said equipment suppliers. So uh, that would then obviously be fridges, cranes, tailors, uh, in my understanding. Um, otherwise, Livingston, maybe you can give us a little bit more clarity on that. Yes, you, you can. Even if you are a truck dealer or a truck manufacturer, you can import uh, fridge units, tail lifts, uh, uh, that even if you are not the, the manufacturer of those units. If you have the DXF drawing, you can bring it in, specify all the correct dimensions and weights, and even uh, share it uh, in the public library. Uh, we will then just check the spec so before it goes live to everybody else. Olaf and his team will check the spec, maybe go back to the tail lift or fridge manufacturer just to make sure they're happy with all the information. And then we will make it available in the public library. Yeah. I see and he's then, just uh, added to that, Martin. Sorry, he says vehicle specifically. Vehicle specifically. Okay, yeah. that's a good question. And uh, it's something we do want to give you control of is your own vehicles. At this point, we are still controlling uh, the adding of the vehicles and Olaf uh, works very closely with the product managers from the OEMs uh, to do this. We are thinking about allowing you as product managers and engineers to bring in your own vehicles. Um, that feature Whilst it might not happen in the next few months, it is definitely something we are looking at. It will improve the overall integrity of the data because you as the manufacturer will then be fully in, in control of all your dimensions, your masses, and the drawing itself. And you can uh, then check it out in prototype mode before making it available to the dealers and the public. Um, I, am looking, I do look forward to that. Uh, because it will ensure that uh, far more accurate data and more up-to-date data. But it is not a, an entirely straightforward process to produce uh, this graphic and also to allow you to specify all those values uh, yourself. But we will get there. Yeah. 
I think maybe, Martin, perhaps it's also important to note that you, uh, as an OEM, you will not be able to add a vehicle to the public library of a competitor vehicle. Uh, is that correct? Yes, yes. You'll then only be able to upload your own vehicles. Um, okay, and then the final question from Livingston also. Uh, can the app check the vertical swing or pitching clearance between cab and semi-trailer? The vertical one, yes. That's a good question because what happens is when this vehicle goes through the dip, uh, do through a dip, obviously the fifth wheel has a bit of movement in it and there'll be a, the, the tip of uh, at the top of the trailer will come forward a bit. So there will be an angle here which could be six uh, degrees or, or more and uh, that is something we have considered is that we can show uh, a tilt angle between the vehicle and the truck tractor so that you can see what happens when the vehicle goes through a dip um, I have yeah we have done manual calculations for this in the past um, but hopefully I'll make a note of that Olaf if you can just document that that we add that to future functionality so these, these kind of requests are great for us because we we check how many other users uh, request the same feature and based on how many people want it, we will then uh, prioritize uh, the features that we add next. So this feedback is very valuable and helps to improve the app over time. So another way of uh, making us aware of what you'd like in the software is to use the chat at the bottom right here, which I'll show you. So that chat, it's a live chat feature, um, which allows you to send us a message. So I'll just click on send, send a message, and I'll just say, hi, Olaf, please, can, you, can we add our own, maybe something like, hi, Olaf, uh, please, can we add our own vehicles? And I'll submit that, and then, uh, we get notified of this and Olaf maybe will just check that out and then reply uh, shortly. I'll close that chat. So you, whilst you're waiting for a reply, you can close it and it will pop up uh, once Olaf has sent us a reply. So this is a great way because it also gets documented in our system. So we can attach your name to that feature request so that when we do add it, we will notify you specifically that we have released a feature that you have requested. All right, so we'll wait for a reply there from Olaf. Um, and obviously you can use that for general support questions as well. So if you have a question on how to use the app or how to find something, you can just pop it through there. Here's our reply from Olaf. Hi Martin, thank you for your request. We've added this to future functionality and we will let you know when it's available. Great, thanks Olaf. Okay, so we've got, got some feature requests there, bringing in own vehicles, uh, vertical tilt on swing clearance. Any, anything else on that? Uh, yeah, it, it has come through. I was busy typing a response there. Just the ability to do stability calculations for cranes. I know that's also a future uh, functionality item. Yeah. Okay, the stability calculations, yeah. We have had a few requests from that. It's quite an, adv an, an advanced feature. So just we'll make a note of that. Um, when it comes to stability, the one feature we have added is rollover stability. So for example, if I go to notes and warnings here, we've added a, a calculation here, the static rollover angle for the vehicle and trailer one and trailer two, shown in degrees. And um, this is just a static rollover with assuming a stiff suspension. So it is not 100% accurate. But it is, you know, when it comes to yeah, vehicle stability and crane stability, these type of calculations uh, are obviously involved. So we do have, so if we go to our COG view summary, so to do any sort of stability or rollover calculation, we need to know the center of gravity of every single item. So you can see here, we show the driver, the bull bar, the fuel, the chassis, the trailer, the payload, and a combination of all of those center of gravities uh, allows us to work out rollover stability and eventually say crane stability. Okay, so that's a view. So we'll go back to overview and summary. 
All right, is that it, Olaf? Shall we move on from there? Uh, yep, perfect, Martin. You can carry on. Um, okay, so we'll go before we go to the simulation now, we'll swap the truck tractor to a generic vehicle. For our bodybuilder and trailer manufacturer customers that are in on this webinar, we encourage you to stay in for these modules, even though you do not have these modules in your version. Bodybuilders will only have the configuration module and the specification comparison. Dealers will also have performance and costing. But you will most probably find this quite interesting and we will still cover the specification module at the end. So what we'll do is we'll swap our truck tractor. To do that, I'll click on vehicle, I'll swap that again, and I'll just swap it to a sample, six by four, 440 horsepower truck tractor. 440 horsepower seems to have become the most popular and common option when it comes to long haul highway applications. The vehicle is completed successfully. Yes, we want to change the description. There's our generic 6x4 truck tractor, and we'll now use that one for the performance module. Because that data from, from the configuration module is linked to the performance module. So in the performance module, we've combined the routing and the performance into one to make it easier. The vehicle parameters can be changed. For example, you could override the total unladen if you needed to. We wanted to make that 9,300, we could just change it. Same applies to frontal area. We calculate the frontal area from the width and height and ground clearance in the configuration module. So that will be quite accurate already. Coefficient of drag, we can also leave the default. Uh, we will provide more options for that in future. Maximum speed is 80. Trailers have or already have the correct TMS from the manufacturer. And then all that's left to do is add the waypoints and the payload. So we'll start with our first route, which will be Durban to Java. So we'll type in Durban, we'll pick Durban, South Africa. And that'll add a waypoint there. And we will load 36,000 kilograms in Durban. And for our next waypoint, we will search for Johannesburg. Click on Johannesburg, that'll add a waypoint, plot the route, in Johannesburg, we will offload 36,000 and add 36,000 again for the return day. We can add Durban as our final destination, or we can just click on simulate. The program will prompt you if you haven't re uh, returned to the start point, do you wish to retard, return to the start point? Yes, we want to do a round trip. So it does, adds that leg and does a simulation and in a few seconds it will produce the route profile which you can run the mouse along the route to see the altitude at various points 1700 there at the top of from Raymond's we can see the average speed 63 kilometers per hour average fuel consumption 58 liters per hundred so this is one of the toughest routes in South Africa with a very high fuel consumption 58 liters per hundred um, and quite a low average speed. So we'll see how that compares to say the Cape Town to Jago route. So we'll just make a mental note of that. 63 kilometers per hour, 58 liters per hundred. And we'll go back to our waypoints and we'll change the route. So to do that, we'll just remove these waypoints using the BIM, take them away and we'll start a whole new route. So we'll start in Cape Town. Let's say at the international airport. We'll load 36 tons again. I'll go to Dover. And we'll offload and load the same again. Return on the simulation. Yes, we want to return back to Cape Town. We'll plot the return leg and run the simulation. It takes a few seconds longer to run the Cape Town route. Uh, the longer the route, the longer it will take to do all the calculations. Here's our Cape Town route. Whilst the overall drop in altitude from Joburg to Cape Town is the same as from Joburg to Durban, the route is a lot easier. And as a result, the fuel consumption and speed are a lot better. So the average speed is much higher. It's 
So it's gone from 63 to 70 kilometers per hour. And average fuel consumption has dropped by about eight liters per hundred. So we can see how uh, the route affects the, the fuel consumption at trip time. It's a considerable difference. Um, so something to, to be aware of rather than always just using an average fuel consumption. If a customer is working on a specific route, it's best to get an accurate or a more accurate uh, estimate uh, for that route. All right, we'll leave the simulation with these results and move on to the costing module. Any questions on the performance module there, Olaf? Martin, no, no questions have come through from that module. No, no questions, Olaf. No. Okay, we've got another 15 minutes or so left and uh, we'll move on to the costing module. Okay, we've simplified the costing module a fair bit from what you might be used to in Transolve. The idea being to make it quick and easy to do a calculation, but still be able to do a very accurate calculation. So we've got favorites such as utilization and fuel price at the top, then the fixed costs, uh, finance, crew, insurance, variable costs such as fuel, tires and maintenance, and then the total costs at the bottom total cost and also total revenue that the customer will be earning on that route. So we can fine tune some of these uh, variables. And you'll also notice there's a dashboard on the right, which shows us the current total cost per kilometer, profit per month, total cost of ownership, broken down graphically. So you can see how much as a percentage is fuel, maybe how much is finance of the vehicle. So let's watch these uh, percentages to see what happens if we change the utilization. Let's start off with that. We might change that to, let's say, 13,000. So we can move it on the slider or we can type 13,000 into that field. We'll leave the fuel price just under 12 rand a liter for now. It's obviously much lower now than it was a few months ago. So we'll see what the effect will be once it goes up. We'll come back to that. The finance of the vehicle, we'll use the detail button we can override it and do a simple calculation. So if we override that value, we can just type in a new value here, or we can uh, click on the detail button and specify the detail breakdown between the vehicle and the trailer. So for the vehicle, let's say it's 1.9 million and we get maybe 5% discount. We finance it over 60 months at about prime and no residual. The bull bar will make that say 30,000 Rand and the discount also finance in the 60 months. The trailers we've now split such that you, you can specify different finance periods. So this is more realistic in terms of the life of the trailer, which could be as much as say 10 years. So we'll finance it over 120 months. And then the second trailer will do the same. Front of we financed the whole rig uh, over one period, and that was not always accurate uh, when it comes to trailers. So we'll finance another 120, we'll click on OK. It's nearly two and a half million Rand for a rig, which costs 43 and a half thousand Rand per month to finance, and comes out at 335 per kilometer. Okay, so then let's look at some of the other items, the driver, the crew, let's, increase the driver's wages to 30,000. Driver will need to work a bit of overtime. Insurance, because we are a good customer with low accident rate, we can reduce that to about 5%. License fees are linked to the province and the TMS. So we can just check those values. They should be quite accurate. We show the, the province the effective date of the fees, April 2019 and we click on OK, we're happy with the license fees. Overheads, these are typically the costs are, uh, to manage your fleet of vehicles. Could be rent of premises, secretarial, administration staff, uh, mechanics in the workshop. These, so typically these costs are 10% of fixed costs. For a very efficient operation, they could be as low as 5%. For a management intensive operation, they might be 15 to 20% of fixed costs. The fuel is linked to the performance simulation by default. 
So in this case, 50 liters per 100. We can override that if we want. Let's say we want to average it out between the Durban and the Cape Town route. And we, we said, well, it was 58, 50. Let's say halfway would be about 54 liters per 100. But maybe your vehicle gets slightly better than this one. Let's make that 52 liters per 100. Tires, we've simplified the parameters to specify the tire price and life. So for each axle, it's it's the life or the average cost of the tire and the average life of the tire. So instead of having first set of tires, remaining sets, retreads, we've just uh, specified average cost per tire, average life per tire. That should hopefully make it much easier to do the tire calculation. Let's say that life on the front is a hundred thousand on the steering axle and we'll give the driven axles 160,000. Notice when I change the life, how it affects the cost per kilometer. So the longer the life, obviously the lower the cost. So you can balance it out between price of the tire and the life of the tire. Similar uh, thing applies to trailer one and trailer two. Okay, so we're happy with the trailer tire costs. Then we can change the maintenance costs on the rig overall. Let's say we get a maintenance contract from a manufacturer at 70 cents per kilometer, but we add 10 cents for the trailer, so we make that 80 cents per kilometer. And the pole fees will average that out uh, over the two routes so at uh, 20,000 Rand per month. The double click on route, we'll just put in an average there for, for tolls per month. They'll give us a total cost per kilometer of say 16 and a half rand. Let's say our customer charge 18 rand a kilometer. That would produce a profit of just under 20,000 rand per month. If we change any of these parameters, we'll see what the effect will be on say the cost and the profit. So notice how low now the fuel percentage is as, as a percentage of total cost. It's only about 37%. So if the fuel price goes up to say 16 Rand a liter again, which it was before the lockdown, then our cost shoot up by about two Rand a kilometer and the fuel as a percentage of total goes up to 44%. And then now we're making a loss. So obviously the fuel price has a huge impact on our overall costs. To counter that, we might change some of the other inputs. For example, let's uh, add a residual for the vehicle. So on the finance, we could maybe add a residual on only the truck tractor. So we don't give anything else a residual value. So the trailer and the uh, trailer stay at zero. We just give the truck tractor 20% residual. 18 Rand 79 will drop to 18 Rand 36. So there's a bit of a saving if we include a residual for the vehicle. The biggest impact will probably be if we increase the utilization. Let's push that up to 15,000 kilometers. That'll bring our rate down again per kilometer and give us a profit. So the big ticket items when it comes to costing on a torque liner are, I would say, the fuel price and fuel consumption and the overall utilization of the vehicle. The price of the vehicle somewhat less significant uh, because these items have a bigger influence on the overall uh, costs. All right, any questions on the costing module? Okay, I'll just move on to the specification module. Just one thing, Martin, it's not a question as such, but perhaps just to briefly touch on the linking of toll fees uh, going forward. Yes, okay. Um, that is a feature that we'll be adding soon. That's one of the features we haven't added in Transol. So there will be a detail button coming here to link toll fees to the route. Okay. All right, then the specification module. Okay, we've got our sample for 40 horsepower truck. Let's say we were looking for that 26480 in the end that we had. If we type that into our search and we don't find it, it could be that that vehicle is in a different class. We separate the truck tractors at about 440 horsepower. So 440 horsepower would be 
considered medium power, whereas the 480 would be considered high power. So if you don't find the truck that you're looking for in the search here, maybe just look at the filters on the left and include high powered truck tractors as well. That will increase the list of competitive vehicles and we'll type in 26480 and now we'll find that vehicle because it falls into the high power class. We'll select it and add the items side by side. Okay, we will change this soon that all these items are expanded by default. At the moment, only one category can be expanded. We're going to, by default, expand all of these and allow a vertical scroll on all these items. That's the specification module. So just the filters uh, that you can adjust and the se selection of your competitive vehicle. The preview allows us to make a few small changes to the report, decide what pages to include and exclude so that we end up with one PDF document. So we can include the reports we want, uh, print, download, and email it, add, change our description a bit, and specify prepared for and the phone number. We can save the calculation, share it with our colleagues uh, to collaborate on a calculation. And we've got an undo feature as well. I probably could have shown you that. I'll go back to the, the loading module. I'll still show you that uh, just now. I still want to show you the building of a semi-trailer. So what I'll do now is be done with our interlink uh, combination. I'll go back home. I'll save this as well. So yes, I'll save that. And I'll also call this a demo. One more calculation where I'll build um, a semi-trailer flat deck. So for that, we'll go back to our Questa. Let's go to that Questa 6x4 truck tractor. And instead of the low bed trailer that we had, we'll now just add a, our own uh, flat trailer. So we go to trailer one, semi-trailer. We'll use a template this time. So three axle semi-template, which we can adjust. So the default fifth wheel offset is 510. So the front overhang, we can adjust that to 1800, or as um, I think it was Derry mentioned, we can, we can change the front overhang so that we don't need to move the fifth wheel. So the trailer length, 15400. The width uh, could be, say, 2600. And the mass for the kingpin and the rear, we estimated based on the number of axles and the length of steel. So it's just an estimated for now. We can override that. The body will add a flat deck body. And this will show us that example. So in this case, we are over that limit. If we wanted to, yeah, if, if, if we didn't want to move the fifth wheel, we would actually need to shorten the trailer. Reducing the front overhang wouldn't help, and we can't make it longer because 1800 uh, is the limit. So that's the only way we could uh, uh, move move this into 18 and a half meters is if we could make the front overhang longer. But just to show you how the regulations work for that, the front overhang. If we try to go over 1800, we will be stopped at that. So there's a limit on that. So getting the front overhang and the fifth wheel offset and the overall length right can be a, a bit of a tricky exercise. So if you get stuck with anything, just get in touch on the chat at the bottom here. All right, so that's, uh, I want to show you one more feature just on that payload object. Um, I'm going to go back to that uh, caterpillar that we added. Let's just put it on here again, that cat 310. Let's say we imported this as we did through the DXF feature, and now we want to share it with everybody. So just to show you how that works, I'll click on that, and I'll, when I save that, there's an option here to save it. And on the save, we can specify to only save it to our personal library or save the team library, which makes it available to your colleagues as well, only in your company. Or you can allow the greater uh, truck science community to have access to that item. So that's how you would publish it to the public library, just through ticking that option. 
we will then check it with you, with the original manufacturer, and make it available to everybody. So click on OK. Yes, your request has been submitted. We'll get in touch with you. And that is that is how you add data to the public library. And a similar concept would apply to, to vehicles eventually and already works that way for bodies, equipment, and all payload items. All right, we've used up our one hour. I just, I still want to go back to our presentation just to wrap things up and just run through the remainder of the slides. So we've done the live demo. Uh, here's an overview of what we covered. I showed you how to configure a truck tractor with semi and interlink uh, trailers. We ran some simulations to see the effect on, of the route on fuel consumption and trip time. And we did a cost per kilometer exercise and changed the fuel price and the utilization of the vehicle to see how that affects the total overall costs. Please remember to log into the new version. Um, you can visit our website, truckscience.com, click on login. Uh, we've sent you your login details. So you'll be logging in with your email address and the password that we sent you. If you've forgotten your password, you can uh, click on the forgot password link to have it sent to you again. All right. It's very easy uh, to, to get up and running. There's nothing to install. Um, and there are, you should have no internet firewall restrictions. And in our last slide, we'd, we'd really love to hear from you, get feedback on how we can improve our software and what features you'd like to have added next. So you can get in touch with us via the live chat feature, which I've shown you, or you can send an email to support at truckscience.com. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Okay, so I'll end the session now. Uh, keep well and stay safe, everyone, and uh, goodbye.